We're going to call the meeting of December 2nd, 2013 to order. Mr. Love, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, sir. Roll call, please. Council Member Valdivia. Here. Council Member Friend. Here. Mayor Velasquez. Here. Council Member Scatini. Here. Council Member Gomez. Present. City Manager Vera. Present. City Attorney Mall. And Chief of Police Westrick. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Verification of agenda posting. The agenda for the City Council meeting of December 2nd, 2013 was posted on the bulletin board at City Hall on November 26th at 3.20 p.m. for Government Code Section 54954.2. Thank you very much. Tonight we have a proclamation for the Hollister Women's Club Centennial Anniversary. Is Cindy Biesmeyer here? Yes, she is. Whereas in 1913, a group of women convinced of the importance of solidarity, solidarity and opportunity embraced the ideals of the Women's Club movement in the United States and founded the Women's Club of Hollister on September or Saturday, December 6, 1913. And now therefore, I, Ignacio Velasquez, Mayor of the City of Hollister, with the City Council, congratulate the Women's Club of Hollister on the occasion of the 100th anniversary and wish them continued success in the various programs to enhance our community. Thank you. Well, I was supposed to be flanked by lots of people from the club, so um, thank you so much. We're enjoying um, our 100th year starting December 6th. We're having a great party on December 7th from 2 to 5 with bands and music, so see me if you'd like to get a ticket for $5. It's an ice cream social. but. Um, through the years, we've done things like started the library, bought the first ambulance uh, in the county, planted the trees down San Benito <coughs> Street, and more recently, um, uh, donated backpacks to different agencies that need them for children that are taken out of their homes. And we're part of the Women's Fund with Community Foundation. So we s hope to go for another 100 years. Thank you so much, sir. Where's Thank you very much. At? Cindy? Where's the party at? It's at the Thank you very much. Let's move on to item A, consent resolutions. Are there any items council wants to pull from the? I got several. Agenda? I'm sorry? I, I have several. Um, I got A4, A7. That's it. Any other items? Okay. Is there a motion for a Mr. Substance? Mayor, I'm sorry. Um, I also have speakers' cards for A6 and A7. A6 and A7? Mm -hmm. I move that we approve all the items on Section A with, uh, except for A4, A6, A7. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Move forward to A4. <clears throat> Yeah, I have a question. Uh, <clears throat> how much longer are we going to use this? Uh, well, we're extending this guy's contract. Am I correct on that? Correct. <clears throat> how much more time are we going to use this guy? Uh, actually, we should be done, except for maybe like one more meeting. And it, what is that meeting going to be? You know, We just have a couple more bargaining groups that we just need their uh, final agreement, and we will be done with this with okay. them. Okay. I thought that we should have been done with that sometime back. Correct. Yeah, our, the one that you're approving tonight will um, took longer than we expected. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion for approval? I'll A4. Move we approve A4. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item A6. That's, A7? No, A6. Marty Richmond. 
Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, Marty Richard Hollister. I wanted to make a comment on this. I'm glad you came to an agreement, but I notice on this agreement, like many of the others, that it's, it's, it's got to be based on assumptions over the next two years because we don't know for sure that many of the items that we are um, planning on or estimating on will happen. You just don't know. So you don't know how many retirees you're going to get. You don't know exactly what the COLA rates are going to be. You don't know what the health care rates are going to be. And, and, and most contracts that are written are exactly like that. If you're looking forward, you have to make your best estimate. But one of the things I think it's important to do is to learn from your experience. And the only way to do that is to keep track to see if those estimates are actually working as you project it. So I hope that uh, you will direct your staff to set up a program, and you don't want to do it every day because things go up and down. Perhaps once a year, even if they don't make a formal report, just to track uh, what they base their estimates on that allowed you to come to this agreement, like we think the coal is going to be less than 4%. We think two guys are going to retire. We're going to get four new hires versus what actually happened. So the next time you have to do a contract, we can see which of these are more reliable and more predictable, and we can get a better feel for what's going on. And at the end of this contract, then you'll, someone will be able to stand up and say, yes, it worked out the way we thought it would, it worked out better than we thought it would, or it worked out worse than we thought it would. And this is not so we can criticize them in retrospect, because again, no one knows what's going to happen in the future but so we can learn from, from what we've done. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Richmond. Are there any other speakers? Not on this item. Okay. Council Member Scatini. <coughs> uh, just, just a question uh, maybe for the chief. Yes, sir. Our chief. Uh, the <coughs> you, you're going to buy these crowd stoppers. Uh, this wait, 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 I'm wait, sorry. We're on item A6. A6. You just talked about it. Motion to approve A6. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Now, can I continue? Now we'll move to item A7. A7. Okay. Any speakers? Uh, Marvin Jones. South Street. I uh, had no problem with this yet, this item. I just uh, wondered if they were comparable to the ones that we have now. And I uh, just wanted to relay a story from the Lights On Parade last Saturday. I had a couple of vehicles out on South Street, so I put them in the driveway to make room for some people coming down to the Lights On Parade. Went and did some errands, came back, came down West Street, got to South Street, and there was a City truck there, parks department, I'm assuming, but I'm not sure. And they had just put the barricades up on South Street. That's fine. I just got out and showed them my license. Hey, I need to get to my house, two or three doors down there. Well, the city has authorized us to put these up, and, and, uh, and so we put them up. So I can't buck the authorities. The authorities said they're up. And they were nice and polite and cordial and friendly, no problem. But they wouldn't let me in. And they drove off. So I opened, opened the thing, drove in, and I learned as a youngster uh, if you go through a gate and if the gate's open, you leave it open. If the gate's closed, you leave it closed. So I closed it. No problem. It didn't hardly amount to a nuisance, certainly. So I was in the house, hour or so later, young man knocked on the door, asked if it was okay, can I park there right in front of your house? And I said, sure, no problem. And that, uh, I said, what about the barricades? And he says, they're open. I said, oh. <laughs> The authorities won't like that. <laughs> and, and most of the parking places were taken there, which is no problem again. Get closer to the parade, it's easier on you. In previous years, they'd always put the barricades at the Monterey end of South Street. I understand last year was the first year they'd put them at the West Street 
the end of South Street so no one could get into their house or no one could get into the vacant parking spots that were there. I, so if you want your barricades to be substantial, maybe you ought to get some, some razor wire and coil it out there and then folks <laughs> won't be moving it. But the ones that were there and the fees that you're purchasing are quite similar. Uh, they'll work if you guard them. And if you, won't, if you don't guard them, they won't work. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Council Member Scatini. Uh, that's a hard one to follow. Um, what I want to know, Chief, is that uh, the purchase in these uh, crowd stoppers, are you going to, is that coming from a special fund from the motorcycle rally, or is that coming from the general fund? General fund. Okay. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions from the council? I, I, I guess I do. I, I thought we had at the last meeting the special meeting, we discussed these barricades and we gave the city manager authorization to, to do this from the general fund, but we didn't know there wasn't any money in the rally fund. Right. Right. And, and keep in mind, the rally money is general fund money. I mean, we, we, we don't necessarily have a, I mean, we have a, I guess, a cost center that's set up, you know, to kind of keep track of the rally, but everything that happens with the rally is, is all general fund monies. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions then? And just, just for clarification, they're not, I don't, I mean, <clears throat> it's, it says for, um, for mo, bear with me one second. It says crowd control operations during special events. So it hasn't, there's nothing in here that says anything about the rally. Correct. We, we, we expect to use them for both the rally, yeah, for multiple uh, lights on celebration, yeah. the air yeah. show. Street um, festival, street festival mm -hmm. anything that uh, we actually need. Crowd okay. Crowd okay. Yeah, just for public clarification, yeah. I don't want anybody to think we're making special purchases for the rally if it's going to be used for multiple events. Yeah, and we don't have anything at all right now. Uh, I think the ones that Dr. Jones is referring to are the ones that were rented by the HDA. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Thank you very much. We approve A7. So motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Move on to item B1. Move that we approve item B1. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Item C1, public input. This is time for anyone in the audience to speak on any item not on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. When the city clerk calls your name, please come to the podium, state your name and city for the record, and speak to the city council. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes. Please note that state law prohibits the city council from discussing or taking action on any item not on the agenda. Other speakers? Yes. Joe Love. Good evening, council. Uh, I have a long list of items here I'd like to get put on the agenda. Actually, there was three, now it's down to two, because I understand one of them is going to be taken care of uh, once you take possession of San Benito Street. Uh, I'd like to see about on the parking signs that's going to go up. Next to the Veterans Building, there is no time limit parking. And what tends to happen is people that own businesses on around the Veterans Hall seem to park there all day and you know and the thing is is that uh, we like to let our veterans have a shot at getting a, getting a space there to park we like to see about putting up the three hour parking signs on our side of the building along the side of the building where it's, it's open parking right now uh, when the signs do go back up uh, also we'd like to see two additional handicapped parking spaces in that area so that the handicapped not only veterans, but the general public will, can have a place to park. Uh, there's only two spaces next to that building, and uh, there's there's more than just a couple of veterans that show up, and uh, there's other people that come into that building that needs those parking spots. So uh, I'd like to see if that can be put on the agenda to uh, to see if that can be done. And the other one is uh, we, uh, as veterans, uh, 
or is managing the building right now, we'd like to see if we can get our assembly permit fees waived for the veterans groups because uh, we do have functions throughout the year and we do have, and we do understand that we have to, you know, get some permits signed by the by the chief for when we have uh, functions that have alcohol and uh, but we'd like to get to see if we can get the fees waived on that and see if we can get that on the agenda for next for next month or next time and that's all I have thank you very much Marvin Jones still on South Street. <laughs> wonder if I could get a rebate on my water bill. There's a line item on the water bill that the sweet street is sweet swept. It's been five weeks since the street has been swept. He comes by every Tuesday. Actually, he came by today. Right down in the middle of the road. Brush turning, but it wasn't touching the pavement. So he did make the run today, but it's been at least five weeks since they have swept South Street between Monterey and West, both sides. And that uh, since we're not sweeping it, can I get a rebate on my water bill? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Any um, more? Mr. Mr. Mayor, really quick, I, I, is, is uh, I could ask this question if it's okay is is Marvin within the downtown area because I thought uh, where he lives it's getting swept twice a month or every two weeks I think actually downtown downtown gets swept once every other day every other day right um, and I know that everybody's heard this before and I think it's <coughs> funny you know Marvin wants a rebate but remember that the, the bill you pay for street sweeping in the entire city you don't pay for the street sweeping that's done in front of your house um, and that's usually the, the canned phrase. Um, but well, I'll check and make sure that, you know, things are getting done um, on South. And, yeah, and I just want to make sure that we yeah. clarified because yeah. Marvin said it was once. I just wanted to make sure that we all knew that it's supposed to be. In residential every areas, other, it's every two weeks. Every now. two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what is that charge? Is it $1.20? Uh, it's $2.40? $2.40. Yeah. Like okay. So. I got your coffee next time, Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Moore. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Council Members. Andy Moore, Vice Mayor, San Juan Batista. I wanted to make it over here four or five weeks ago to address uh, uh, this fire. You can call it consolidation, which I'm very was very uh, proud of. I think it's working great, uh, and I wanted to come over and you know one thing comes up when. You know, there's always something. But after Saturday, uh, we had a major fire in San Juan. And uh, I said, I got to come over here. And, uh, and I want to thank the city of Hollister, uh, the chief, our chief, uh, all the departments that responded from Gilroy, uh, Aromas, Tri County, North Monterey County, Cal Fire, and all the personnel from the chief on down to the uh, to the reserves. Uh, they did a great job. We could have lost a whole block. Uh, if you go by and look, they stopped it at the uh, Chinese restaurant. And I, I just felt, you know, all day today that I need to come over and express my uh, appreciation. And this goes back to the fire uh, consolidation. I call it that. You can call it whatever you want. The last two years of us putting, uh, you know, I think Friday we had a, a Phil Rossi was there on, on Saturday with two reserves that were basically out of the box within two minutes on that fire. But uh, what, what you people have, it took Hollister because you were the main driver on this thing because you had the re resources, the county bought in, we bought in, and now uh, I believe that it's working fantastic. Our station's about 98% completed. We will have an open house by the next 30 days. Uh, I think it was money well spent for everybody in San Benito County, and I just wanted, to, I, I just knew that I had to come over here and tell you guys thanks for stepping up to the plate. County, you know, came on board. My fellow council members came on board. 
And uh, I think that it, it's been a total success for the first six months. And uh, thank you so much for uh, kind of, you know, leading the way on this thing and saying, okay, you know, we'll, 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 we'll look into it and we'll see what we can do. And, uh, and I think it's been great. And it shows we can all work together and, you know, thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Chief, thank you. I know the, you pulled all the guys together out there and all the departments did a great job. Keith Snow. One minute, Keith Snow. Uh, I want to say thank you, Robert. I thought I bought today. And the next thing, uh, I wrote to you, Bill. Yeah, we're back about about being born here with the recreation committee, and and that's when the big answer. I want to say apologize to the council, uh, to things of my opinions, my view. So like Robert, uh, this this article, my view. I want to say things to uh, me, and Chief, and I, I talked to Mike that. Our chief, I uh, get an a, a idea to, to create revenue for the fire, fire and the peace officer more. And uh, I want to say that uh, I'm looking forward to the moving the, the fire chief. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Snow. Another speaker? Okay. Let's move forward here. Item D and E, there is no business. F1. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you received a, a brief uh, request um, at our last council meeting about the possibility of uh, uh, participating in a feasibility uh, study with um, uh, or for our community choice aggregation program. Um, it's on the agenda. I believe there's a few people here that would like to speak and make a quick presentation. Um, we have received a, a request from the, uh, from the Chamber of Commerce. I will say that also the County of San Benito and I believe the City of San Juan Bautista um, are also participating in this. Um, if the Council desires to move forward, uh, staff is requesting uh, that it authorizes the City Manager or his designee uh, uh, to uh, um, be a part of the, pro the Project Development Advisory Committee. Um, so with that said, I will uh, turn it over to uh, whoever wants to be the first speaker. I think we have a few. David Huboy. David Huboy Hollister. And uh, as you know, you know, the uh, feasibility study to move forward with the community choice aggregation for our community has the support of the Chamber of Commerce. And I want to thank you for putting this on the agenda this evening as a member of the Green Committee. And it is my esteemed pleasure to introduce to you Brennan Jensen, who is with the Monterey Bay Community Power Organization, which is a collaborative association of Bruce McPherson's, a Santa Cruz County Supervisor's, uh, Bruce McPherson's office. So without any further ado, I want to I introduce Brennan Jensen, and she'll do a presentation and answer any questions that you may have. Everyone, um, 
Mayor, Vice Mayor, and uh, Council Members. Uh, my name is Brennan Jensen, and it's my great pleasure to return to your Council this evening to provide a more fulsome uh, presentation regarding community choice aggregation. Um, I know that time is tight uh, this evening, so I'm going to try to go through this relatively quickly. Um, but feel free to, uh, to jump in, or we'll, we can have some uh, questions as well at the end. Um, I'm not sure if we've got a clicker or not, but I can, can kind of do it that way. Um, okay, so first off, I just want to give a little bit of an overview regarding uh, community choice aggregation and what it is all about. So. Um, it is there basically currently our powers provided by an investor owned utility pg and e um, there's also something called a municipal um, owned utility and in that case all of the energy services would be provided by a local m municipality a local government city uh, or county this is sort of in between and basically a local government is able to thank you um, local government is able to take over the just the piece of uh, procurement of the energy, basically purchasing the energy and or generating it themselves and providing that to the local community uh, for the energy use. All other services related to energy provision are retained and maintained uh, by the existing investor owned utility, in this case PG&E. Uh, so they continue to provide all the distribution, prepare the customer service. To the customer, really essentially nothing is different. What is in fact different is that uh, the local community has control over what energy is provided and utilized within their local community. Uh, let's see. Okay, now I have a clicker, but <laughs> I, may, I may or may not be any better at this. <laughs> is it the up down? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't get a free tutorial. <laughs> oh, no. If it doesn't work for me, then that's bad. <laughs> that's all right. We, we have technology to do this multiple ways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so a little bit about... Um, Which button are you making the slide go with? Just the, the right. forward, oh, yeah, the arrow. Slide. Awesome. Thank you. All right. See, look at this. This is community in action right here. And that's exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about local control. Um, so why, uh, why would somebody want to pursue community choice aggregation? And that's because it has tremendous benefits. Um, it benefits um, the local economy by keeping the dollars that are expended by local residents and businesses on energy right here in this local community. Right now, everyone that is present in this community is paying their electricity bill, and those dollars are leaving our community day after day, month after month. This is a way of keeping some of those dollars here locally in our community and for us to have control over how those dollars get to be utilized here in our community. That of course has the ability to help create local jobs, um, help to uh, drive the, the market. Um, this is also something that is not taxpayer uh, supported. This revenue comes from money that's already being spent on electricity but is leaving our community. So this is a way of keeping it here right at home. Um, in terms of environmental benefits, there's also uh, quite a few of those, and that is actually one of the primary drivers for community choice aggregation, at least currently here in California. And that is because it's a mechanism by which we can increase the content of renewables and other uh, green um, energy sources uh, by choosing to, to purchase and incentivize those energy, energy sources above others. Uh, presently, PG&E is, is on pace uh, to increase their amount of uh, renewable energy within their portfolio. They're presently at about 16%. Uh, this, uh, by pursuing this particular um, opportunity, we may be able to increase that content uh, more significantly. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about where this is already being done, uh, but in Marin County, for instance, they're presently able to provide 50% uh, clean energy, um, and that has additional benefits to their local region, especially in terms of uh, greenhouse gas reduction. Um, and then the final item on there is really the consumer choice piece, which we already kind of talked about. Um, that's giving consumers the choice as to where their, their energy comes from. So every res uh, resident and business has the option to uh, elect uh, to, uh, to opt in or to opt out um, of community choice aggregation should your community choose to pursue it. 
go ahead and go to the next one. Um, so just a little bit about how it works. Um, the, uh, the community actually forms a joint power authority with all participating uh, uh, agencies. Uh, there is a maintained partnership with PG&E. As I mentioned, they continue to provide all the billing service, repair, um, everything apart from the provision of energy, the generation of energy itself. Uh, customers have the choice to either opt in or to opt out. They can stay with PG&E. Uh, for instance, in Marin County, when it first got started, they uh, started off with a, about 8,000 participants, and they're now up to about 91,000 participants. And those are people who have chosen to elect in over time. Um, Th this also has the added benefit of creating some competition with PG&E, and that's an effort to help keep those prices um, lower. Uh, so uh, what uh, Marin County has seen, for instance, is that uh, they've been able to uh, offer this service at parity with PG&E and be able to provide some additional services. Um, and then so just moving on, I've actually touched on some of these pieces. You can go one more. Um, and it looks like it changed my uh, slide just slightly, so apologies for that. Um, but just here's some highlights on uh, Marin Energy Authority. So they are presently in their third year. There's a handful of jurisdictions that are moving forward with this here in California. Among them leading the way is uh, Marin County. Also, Sonoma County is about to launch theirs. San Francisco County and others are also exploring this. Um, as I mentioned, they're already at 91,000 customers. Uh, they have higher cost competitiveness. They started off with 33% renewable um, portfolio, which is about double what PG&E is providing us presently. Uh, they did that at a, a slight increase. They chose as a community to offer that at a slight increase to their consumers, and that was at 2% higher. Now three years in, they're able to offer that same level of 33% at parity with PG&E. Um, or sorry, actually, they've increased that all the way to 50% at parity with PG&E. They also offer a 100% renewable portfolio as well um, at that slightly higher cost point for those folks that are willing to spend that, those additional dollars. And right here at the bottom, it's a little bit cut off, but um, what's, what's really relevant there is the amount of money that's being um, expended. So in their case, it's $52.9 million in revenue. Um, that had been leaving their community that's now able to be retained. Um, those are jobs that are being created. That's economic stimulus for their local community. And they've got almost a $3 million, $2.9 million surplus um, after they have serviced their debt. So, so in, they're in their third year. They've already paid off all of their debts. They have a surplus. And those are dollars that now they can choose as a community how they want to reinvest that in the, in, into the community, maybe development of new re local renewable sources, maybe it's energy efficiency measures, maybe it's delivering that right back to the consumer and reducing the rates. Um, it gives that community the option to choose. Um, we'll go one more. So where we're at right now is we're actually not asking uh, this body to decide whether or not community choice aggregation is right for your community. We're not asking for that particular action. Right now we're just in the very initial phase one stage of asking the question is this really as good as it sounds? And in order to sort of explore that, we want to conduct a feasibility study. And what we've done is we've brought together uh, jurisdictions from the tri-county area. It includes Santa Cruz, uh, San Benito, <coughs> and uh, Monterey County cities, counties, and um, special districts who have joined uh, to the table already. Um, and we're pursuing this initial piece, which is to uh, find out what energy is already being generated in our area, l take a look at, the, at those, uh, that energy load data, and find out how much it would cost, what things would look like, what different packages we could potentially offer. Uh, this is a, uh, there's no cost to your jurisdiction to participate. We are inviting you today to join what we're calling the Program Development Advisory Committee, which is a body that's meeting from representatives of all of those jurisdictions, um, meeting presently uh, monthly to, to discuss this. They're looking at uh, issuing an RFP to actually complete the study um, here uh, in the new year. 
Uh, we are uh, raising the funds that are required uh, to complete this study uh, completely independently um, from private donations, foundations, and grants. So there is no impact to your uh, general fund to complete this first exploratory phase. Um, and there's no requirement in terms of staff time, although we do, of course, invite your participation in the Program Development Advisory uh, Committee. Um, we have already received resolutions from uh, the City of San Juan Batista as well as the County of San Benito. Uh, the County has offered to uh, serve on behalf of, of the cities within their county and extends that same offer to your jurisdiction, although you can also choose to provide your own uh, member as well. Uh, so again, the specific request today is uh, not for any dollar contribution. There's no impact to your, um, to your general fund. It is uh, simply to participate in the Program Development Advisory Committee in whatever way you see fit. Um, that may be through the uh, uh, election of uh, providing a representative to actually attend each of those meetings or empowering the county to act on your behalf. Um, and then the third concept, um, which is uh, uh, very important for our feasibility study, is the authorization of um, the energy load data from PG&E, which allows us to look at your local jurisdiction um, and include uh, your energy data in our analysis. Um, so with that, if there are um, any questions, I would be uh, happy to, to answer them. Do we have any speakers, speaker cards? Yes, Chris Kahn. <clears throat> Good evening, Chris Kahn from uh, Monterey County. Uh, first, I want to thank you for uh, putting this on the agenda. This uh, is something that uh, started a number of years ago in Monterey County, and we didn't quite get enough uh, critical mass to get this going. Um, it, uh, when it came to Santa Cruz County, um, they took hold of it and, and really put enough energy behind this to, uh, to get it off the ground. And um, now, by now we've got, San all three counties have, uh, have uh, opted in, uh, at least to the feasibility study phase of this. Um, I believe that all of the cities in Santa Cruz County are in. Um, and, uh, and, pardon? 17 jurisdictions are already in. Um, we still have a few in uh, South Monterey County to, uh, to work with. But, um, but it looks like this is truly going to be a regional effort. The more load data that we can pull and put into this study, the better the potential outcome for, uh, for the offer that we can put on the table at a future date uh, for everybody to decide about. So once again, this is, today is not about uh, whether a CCA is a good thing or not or whether you even want to be in one or not, today is just about deciding do you want to participate in the study uh, and, and the main thing that we need out of that is uh, telling pg e to pull the load data and provide it to the project so that we can evaluate the options that we can come up with for you. Thank you. And yeah, please direct your questions to Brennan. Thank you. Marty Richmond. Good morning, Marty Richmond again uh, from uh, Hollister, uh, this came up at the um, several meetings of the uh, uh, Government Relations Committee of the uh, Chamber of Commerce. And um, I, I support doing the study. I have no idea whether or not I would support actually adopting the, the proposal because without the answers, I don't think anybody should make that decision. Now, I know there's a lot of people who don't want to do the study because they're afraid to get the camel's nose under the tent one inch at a time. But I see another advantage that hasn't been mentioned, and that is whether we like it or not, and I don't like some of it very much, I believe that in the future the government's going to be offering an awful lot of benefits for people who are doing more renewable energy. And they're going to be subsidizing that, which means we'll all pay for it and someone else gets the benefit. So if we're ready, at least, if we've done the study and we're ready and we know the facts and figures, when that day <coughs> comes, we could be ready to apply for the benefits ourselves. If we don't get in on the study program, then we may not never get to that point. 
Now, I'm hard-headed about this. There's an enormous economic difference between Marin County and, and San Benito County. They may, people may have not noticed it, but I have seen it. And uh, Santa Cruz County and Monterey County and Northern, and the Santa Benito and Northern Monterey County, there's an enormous, enormous economic difference. Therefore, the cost factor for us is very, very important, maybe more important than it is for many people in these other areas where they pay a much lower percentage of their income for power. And I'll be looking with my glinty eyes at what it's going to cost because that's going to be very important to me. And, I, and just because I want to do the study does not mean I'm going to walk into this with my eyes closed. So I encourage you to do the study because I'm not afraid of the answers. They will be whatever they are, and then we'll, we can go from there. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Keith Snow. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, one, thing, one thing about the, the energy thing is fracking. Uh, fracking is horrible. One thing that our lead said has led into the research. Frack, fracking kills anything with it, what they do, miles down the earth. The gases, pumping gases, and earth has come up because people get one person. I watched a, a show on that on HBO. How I killed one person, all the animals got killed, all the, all the plants got killed, contain all the all the the, the wells. So we want energy, we want to do things like that. But we had to do, you had to educate yourself to do more research before you guys do anything. Yeah. In council, and, and like I went to a, a you know, they're fracking. I got a company, I know Martin is there too. And they had to do more research on not uh, oppose anything on that, the end drilling in our city, our county. Thank you. Thank you very much. No others. Okay. Council Member Valdivia, any questions? No. Council Member Friend. Yeah, I have a few. <coughs> One, uh, I, I have a problem with some of the statements on your, and, and first of all, let me state, I don't have a problem doing the study. There's some big questions in there. Redirect revenue. Unless you're going to pay more for the commodity that you're already buying, there is no more revenue. Um, two, you say they're going to create local jobs, but you're not going to maintain the substations, the lines, the transmission towers, nothing like that. So what jobs are you renting? PG&E is still doing the billing. PG&E is still doing all the customer care stuff. What are you looking for as jobs? I don't understand that. Market competition potentially drives down costs. That's an absolute statement, and it's right. But when you tell people that you're buying 50% of their power is green power or solar power or water power, you can't compare this, the county of Marin with us. Marin has, just to the north of them, a huge renewable energy source called the, the geysers. The transmission cost from the geysers to Marin County is minuscule compared to what we have to pay on the grid here in, in Monterey or Santa Cruz. There's no, and every cogen, every renewable plant that's built feeds that, that grid. So it's like pouring a cup of water into the ocean and drawing it up five miles down the road, you draw water out of the ocean. You don't get that cup, you get whatever's in the ocean. So to stand there and look at the lines and say, oh, there goes some green power, that doesn't happen. So I think there's a lot of things, a lot of questions that are gonna have to be answered by this study. Um, <clears throat> and control over local rates. I don't understand how that's going to save money. If you're still going to pay PG&E to deliver the power, <clears throat> you're still going to pay PG&E to maintain the system 
and to build the system, then how are you going to get them to say, well, we'll sell it to this co-op cheaper than we can sell it to the customer? I mean, if you can, I'm all for this. I just don't see that happening. I just, that's, that's, that's like asking Safeway to give away their food, and they're not going to do that. So I, I, w I agree with the, you know, the study is worth looking at, and I know David and I have had lots of conversations about this. I just would have a lot of questions to ask <coughs> and, and like to see the answers. Like, like uh, Marty said, you know, if the answers are correct, then we're in it. But there's, that's, that's an uphill battle, especially for a small county like San Benito that's an island. It has no cogens in it. Everything comes in by the, from the grid. So how you can save money, it's like telling them they can get gas from Arizona. That's true. You can buy your gas in Arizona, but you'll pay the PG&E price when it gets here. Mm -hmm. So you got to pay that transmission cost. Uh, I just don't understand how that fits into the equation. That's all. Well, I think you've you've brought up some really great uh, some really great points, and and so just to address some of the some of the pieces there, um, in terms of the revenue, um, you're you're talking about the those are those are dollars that are being expended on electricity already. Now, presently, those are going to an investor-owned utility uh, that has to maintain certain profit levels for their shareholders. By moving that into the into the public realm within a government um, sort of structure. Uh, there is uh, either a government structure or a nonprofit structure, there would not be that same requirement uh, for profit. So th that additional amount of money there then can be reinvested in the local, e in the local e community. So that's after you've paid for all other expenditures, whatever's left over then gets reinvested in the local community. Um, in, in terms of jobs, there are jobs that are associated with the production and purchase um, and generation of uh, power. And so those, uh, those jobs will be direct that will be needed to actually manage the, the um, uh, Community Choice Aggregation JPA. Um, in addition to that, there's local jobs theoretically created by, again, that revenue, those dollars that come in, then the local community has the ability to choose how those dollars are spent. So, for instance, if the local community decided that they wanted those dollars to go into, for instance, incentivizing um, energy efficiency measures in homes and businesses, then that would be um, investing in local dollars for jobs um, related to energy efficiency, related to construction, related to weather Authorization. Um, so that's where the uh, local jobs would be generated is in those kinds of things. And in terms of what particular j jobs would be generated, that's where the CCA itself can help to determine that by choosing where to, where to spend those dollars. And that's a choice that we don't currently have with PG&E. Um, I absolutely would agree that um, our local community is different than Marin, and that's precisely why we are um, looking to do this study, is to see, okay, look, this looks amazing on paper, um, but we don't know what it's actually going to look like here in our local community, and so we want to get a sense of what are our local resources that are already in place that we could draw on from day one, what could we readily um, develop um, over time and, and over what time frame, in, in the short term and the long term, and then what kind of cost is related to that so that we can get a sense of what the local rates would be, which was your, your last point. Because we do have now, all of these pieces are heavily controlled by the Public uh, Utilities Commission in terms of what PG&E can charge for distribution, transmission, all of those kinds of things. Um, we would only have contr control over the production of energy, um, but we would have control over that piece. And so what we're trying to figure out in this study is where everything would align and what is that cost to the consumer. So, for instance, uh, Marin looked at various different levels of providing electricity. If they, if they went at parity with re the renewable level of PG&E, what would it cost their community? If they went to 33 percent and right out of the gate, if they went to 50 percent, if they went to 100 percent. And then they made their choice on how they wanted to proceed based on their local community. We would come up with a similar set of, of different scenarios here that we felt were appropriate. Um, benchmarks for our community and then based on those potential costs we may say hey that's way out of our price range um, or there's great savings here and we want to go in this direction and that's what we're trying to ascertain okay no that's all i didn't mean to put her on the spot no, that's oh. good. No. <laughs> it's great yeah i did okay 
<laughs> Council Member Scatini. Yeah, what I want to know is, uh, this is my second go round because I listened to it when you did the Board of Supervisors, and uh, I'm, I'm really totally impressed with this, and I, I too like to see what happens during the investigation. That, to me, would make a big difference, but all these other cities, the surrounding areas must feel the same way, else they wouldn't, they wouldn't provide a resolution to continue this. One thing is that we're not bound to anything, right? And it's, uh, it's, it's what, what, you, what the study comes out of this county and Monterey County and Santa Cruz County, would all, the, all three counties be working together? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, what I'm trying to say to be more, more, more cake left in the cake pan, right? <laughs> Absolutely, plenty of cake for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and you can buy a lot of cakes too if you can save money. But I, I, I'm 100% behind this, and I like to see what comes out of that, of that study. Well, um, I want to I want to thank you, Vice Mayor Scatini, uh, for your leadership in helping to to bring this item before the council. Mm -hmm. um, and you're you're absolutely right that um, the the intention is to be able to provide for the region, and it's it, we're looking at it as an economy of scale by coming together as a region that's already uh, has a demonstrated history of working together on various projects. Um, to look at, at how can we make this work for everyone, understanding that each of the counties would have certain resources to bring to the table um, and being able to, to leverage those. Um, it also sort of highlights the importance of participating at this particular moment because what we're trying to do is we're trying to sort of define the, our, our local universe in terms of what resources we have. And um, while uh, particular jurisdictions may be able to come on board a little later on down the road, there may be an added cost if we wanted to expand the jurisdiction later on after we've already completed the study. And so we're trying to get as many people on board, as many jurisdictions on board right here um, in this moment to be able to keep those costs low for everyone. Um, moreover, we've gone to this, uh, this very extensive um, uh, fundraising effort to ensure that general funds will not be affected. Uh, by this initial study. Thank you. No Council Member Gomez. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, thank you for, for the presentation. We appreciate it. I'm completely supportive of renewable energy. I mean, I think um, whatever, whatever we could do to, you know, um, look at other forms of, of energy for, uh, for our, our community, I think it's a, a really good thing. I, w I will say, though, whenever I see AB32 or SB375, I freak out uh, because um, that's not my favorite piece of legislation, um, mandating folks. And, you know, to be completely honest with you, it's backfiring, I think, personally. I think it's it stimulated a lot of thought into renewable uh, energy, and, and folks are looking at different, um, different ways of, of obtaining energy, but um, I think it's backfired. Um, in the face of a lot of legislators, so I'm sure they wouldn't mention that. Um, I'm fine with the feasibility study. Um, I, I don't know a ton about this, uh, but, um, but I'm all for conducting the study um, and looking at the, uh, at the possible results from it. So I'm fine with it. Um, if there was a, a price tag attached to our general fund, um, I would be concerned. Um, but as long as we could avoid that, um, as long as the community is behind it, I'm okay with the feasibility study. Uh, and in absolutely no way does this mean that um, that I would support this when it would come back. You know, if if the findings are are positive, which to be completely honest with you, I I highly doubt anybody's going to come back and say this is not going to work. So sorry for wasting your time. Um, so I'm sure I'm sure the study is going to be done and. I'm interested in finding out who's going to do the study um, because there's a lot of folks out there that um, would like to probably fudge some numbers um, and play with some stuff. I'm sure you folks probably wouldn't admit that, but um, I get concerned. Whenever government is involved with something like this, um, it's concerning to me. So um, uh, I'm fine with the feasibility study um, if the rest of the council is okay with that, uh, and I'm interested in finding out. Um, what the determinations are, what the feasibility study brings out. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Councilmember Valdivia. Yeah, I just want to also thank you for uh, 
I was giving it some thought as everybody else was speaking. Thank you for your presentation. It was very clear and understanding. The one thing that, um, and I also agree, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't uh, vote against any uh, feasibility study, but one thing that I would really look for is uh, how much saving is going to go to the consumer because it gets really tiring when you have all these phone companies, other companies saying we're going to promote this, uh, it's really good, and then before you know, it's over and it goes this way. It never stays like this or down, it goes this way. And that's one of the things that I would be concerned. And then because this is going to have to get paid, the money has to come from somewhere, whether it's grants or whatever, so somebody's going to have to pay it. But I'm really gonna, I really hope that whatever uh, the end result is, is, there's going to be savings to the consumer. And I think that's, to me, that would be like the bottom line in terms of really make, going, making an effort to do that. <coughs> Thank you. Hey, Councilmember Friend. Um, just a couple quick comments, and I, I trust, I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm against this. I think the feasibility study should be, is, is, should be done. But I want you to understand is uh, 15 years ago, the legislature got involved in the utility business and deregulated the utility, and they did that by telling everybody, your rates are going to go down if we deregulate it and make PG&E sell all the power plants. Now, I bet there's nobody in this room that can tell me that their PG&E rate's less today than it was then. The other thing is, if you check with the PUC, you'll find out that PG&E does not make money on the distribution of power. It makes money on the transmission of power. And that's all this group is, is people that are out there shopping to buy the transmission of that power. You know, the pie, the pie is only so big, it can only be chopped up so many ways, and you're adding to the pie. Even the jobs you're adding to are adding to the cost of providing to the customer the service. So I, I really am interested in seeing how those numbers come up. I, I really would like to see those numbers. I think they're going to be, well, I'll, I'll wait. <coughs> Is that it? That's it. Myself, I'm in the, uh, in the industry. I'm all for that, but I, can, I get a little nervous when government gets involved in anything. Prices might start off low, but eventually they uh, start escalating, as Councilmember Valdivia was saying. So I think on, to make me feel more comfortable, I want to see a long term what it's going to look like in five years, 10 years, 20, 50 years. So we're making sure that if there's a savings, it's going to be passed straight through to the residents of our community and not through uh, the businesses that got the sweetheart deal contracts to make this all happen. And that's how I would I think a very okay. important part of what we need to understand. Council Member Scatini. <clears throat> I got one more uh, <clears throat> comment. It, when would this study start? Do you have any idea? Uh, it will start in 2014, and we're just trying to secure the, the final funds, so we don't have a precise date, but the, uh, the intention would be to have it be conducted and completed uh, within the, the calendar year 2014. So the, the, you would come back to this council with this, the study in 2015? Correct. Right. And, so, and then at that point, then we would be looking at a, a, perhaps a more dramatic uh, recommendation based on whatever results we find out. Right. So, and that's really the, the beauty of, of this particular moment is that there, there is no obligation for long-term commitment. Um, and it's, it's really just to look at what, um, what the possibilities might be and then be able to make a more educated and informed decision on whether or not this is right for our community. And that's going to be based on the study. Correct. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think if, if the council uh, chooses to move forward, I'd like to appoint council member friend to the committee, if that would be possible. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we, do we need, do we need a motion for it? Okay, I'll make yes, a sir. motion that we, uh, we approve uh, resolution 2013-187. Is there a second? Question. Question before a second. I have a question before a second. Okay. Are we also going to appoint the city manager? The city manager or the, his the interim city manager. designated appointee. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just did that so we can keep the process moving. Right. If, if Ray wants the council person friend wants to be on the project development advisory committee, mm -hmm. I would love that. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I figured that was your, your answer there. You're not going to get an argument from me. And uh, Council Member Friend was willing to uh, be yeah, involved with yeah, the committee. Yeah, you convinced so. me you got a good sale. <laughs> okay, if I may then, as long as we're changing the resolution slightly to uh, a point Ray right to the Project Advisory Committee, there was one other change um, that I think was sort of requested and it was about um, uh, authorizing us to receive the information from PG&E, um, the, load, the, the, the load data. So that would be another thing that if it could be done in the resolution to, to authorize us to request the load data from PG&E. Thank you. Thank you very much. I put that um, on my resolution. I add that to it. That's okay. Sorry. Um, I was just going to read the, the sort of our template language for that is uh, to authorize the, the uh, chief administrative officer to request on behalf of your ju jurisdiction, the PDAC, and um, the consultant's energy usage data uh, from PG&E for the use of technical feasibility study. Would you email that to me, please? Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. You change your motion to reflect that? I did. Okay. Second? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's, it's that time, 730, and that means uh, I know there's a lot of people in the audience that are have done their hour. So before we move forward to the next item, <laughs> run. <laughs> Nicely done, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Otherwise, very well done. Very well done. That's called knowing your crowd. <laughs> you like to think they're here for us, but you get that one hour in. <laughs> It's me, Dave. All right, David. I know you do a good job. Well, sometimes you need opposing opinions. Yes, you do. You've got to ask those hard questions. Somebody has to explain some of these systems. It's like all these, you know, it's like right here, and then it goes here. It's a beautiful idea. It can work. If you see that, get that Get that up. That's the worst thing they ever did to Utilities was deregulated. Oh, yeah, I see. It's true that you said you're going to do whatever. Well, you know, you raise the money something else. You have so many power plants. You're going to buy it. At an extremely high rate. Hey, Clay. Trust the people in the room. Can you give me a call tomorrow? I got to talk to you about it. Anytime. <coughs> okay, folks, let's move forward. See you. Bye bye. Move on to item F2. F2. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Um, this is an item that is being recommended for your approval by the Hollister Parks and Recreation Commission. And essentially what it is, is it's a resolution that's amending an older resolution that uh, created the, uh, the composition of the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission. And what is being recommended here is that we designate one seat of the five seats on the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission uh, to be recognized as a youth commissioner for a, uh, a high school age student between 16 and 18 years of age to serve on the commission to, to give them uh, maybe the perspective of some of the younger folks in the community. So uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Excellent. Okay. Are there any speakers? Pete Snow. Uh, I can't guys. Uh, one of the guys may be the the commission committee that the uh, we promote to talk about the, the topic too, but uh, that the thank you. None others. No. Motion to approve resolution 2013-188. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much.
Move forward to idea. move forward to item F3. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, again, this was an item that was uh, uh, put, placed on the agenda tonight from a previous request by uh, Gabriel Torres from Chispa. Um, if you'll recall, the city helped participate in a joint effort with Chispa to rehab a, a, a home at 1148 San Benito Street. Uh, that home was sold recently. Uh, the city had received um, uh, its proceeds from the uh, commitment that we made to that home um, way back in 2011. Uh, Chispa has requested that those proceeds be set aside um, for a similar project um, within the city of Hollister. Um, I want to make sure that everybody's very clear that these are actually general fund dollars. Um, so if you decide to go ahead and set aside these for a new project, that's where those, those funds will be coming from. Um, the set or the, the idea or the, uh, the premise behind this would be to work with staff to locate another dilapidated home uh, possibly in the city. Um, we would work collaboratively with Chispa to identify the home or homes um, and then we would absolutely come back to the city council for formal approval of any uh, loan agreement prior to uh, dis uh, disbursement of any of the funds. Um, I think what uh, this action does really again is, is it, uh, it allows Chispa to understand that there possibly is, is a program available to continue sort of doing this and working with uh, the CCA and, and, um, and, and other um, local uh, organizations, um, again, to uh, sort of uh, rehab um, some of the homes that are a dilapidated home within the city of Hollister. So um, with that said, I would be more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, Gabriel, I was here earlier. Yes, he's here. Um, that would conclude my report. Do you want to come up and talk about? <coughs> Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, just as uh, Billy had mentioned, uh, you know this this uh, opportunity, the first house that we did in the city of Hollister, under we're using the uh, uh, Center for Employment Training and the Youth Alliance students, was a great success. Uh, we've had uh, last six years working with the uh, city of Salinas. Hartnell Community College, we did uh, uh, identified uh, you know, vacant lots within the city of Salinas and over that six year period built with the Hartnell Construction Technology Program students and Rancho Cielo. Uh, we built six homes uh, during that period and uh, provided those homes for sale to low income families uh, within the uh, county Monterey. So with this uh, opportunity for uh, to rehab 1148 San Benito Street, it, we felt it was like the seed money that we needed to uh, go ahead and get something up and off the ground here in, in San Benito County. Uh, and given the success of the uh, first home, uh, we feel uh, very positive that we could do this same program one more time. Again, keep in mind that the city's monies that are set would be set aside would be pretty much matched by CHISPA. Uh, for the actual ma construction materials. Uh, we partner with a lot of local manufacturers, Millguard Windows, uh, and a lot of other local, uh, you know, McKinnon Lumber uh, for our materials. So we go to them uh, specifically for that. And again, during that, uh, it could be 12 month, it could be a six month period, depending on the, the condition of the existing home. Uh, but we would work very closely with the code enforcement officer to, um, you know, coordinate with the neighbors, uh, keep that house uh, secure during that construction period and even at the time of sale. Uh, and again, it would be provided to a, a low-income family here in, in the city. So it's, uh, again, great seed money that we look forward to, uh, you know, starting and doing a, an ongoing program uh, here in San Benito County. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any speakers? Marty Richmond. Well, Marty Richmond from Hollister. Uh, I just want to clarify some things. As I understand, maybe for the audience, maybe for myself, uh, as I understand it, the people who are actually doing the work are are either students or trainees or uh, uh, people who are in uh, apprenticeship programs to learn the skills required to do this work and to make sure that they they learn it from both experienced people and to get the work done to or to the standards of the city building codes and the county codes and gets inspected and everything is that correct yes that is correct yeah well i'm in i'm in um, strong support of this program um, uh, the construction industry in the uh, state of california is one of the biggest industries and much of the uh, revenue that you do get whatever it is comes from property taxes depending on 
what split you're in, what, what county you live in, what split is. And uh, not everybody uh, is cut out to be uh, the chief financial officer of uh, Apple, okay? So I'm certainly not, so I hope no one's insulted. I'm not cut out for that. A lot of those are, those are construction jobs, uh, are, can be very good jobs. And I would want to point out when we built the new courthouse, how, how many local construction jobs there were involved in that. Uh, finally, they had to work at it a little bit to get the people qualified, but they did. And there were a lot of, so I am in support of this as an education, as an educational uh, thing. And not only that gets rid of a blight, and it does it without using the RDA, which is gone. And uh, that lifts up the value of every house in the neighborhood. So every nail they drive in or a blighted uh, thing and uh, clean it up, every, that whole neighborhood benefits. So I'm in strong support. Uh, I, I would support it as it stands now. The only comment I have, I find it hard to believe with all these housing programs there are, just so many of them, and they're so complicated, and they all got complicated rules, God knows, um, that we, this doesn't seem to fit into any, and we have to use a general fund. Uh, I don't think there's much risk. Uh, I would support it if only general fund money is available. I, I would still support the program. It's only one house at a time. Um, it's no big risk. But I just, I'm just stupefied once again that we have all these programs, some of which have hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting them that we can't use for a good program because they've got toe tags attached to them that says this can only be used for this and this can only be used for once. I think we got $300,000 in the first time home buyers program. It would seem reasonable that you could use it for this kind of a thing, but you can't. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Case to know. Hey, Council, I'm, I'm for it like a morning. For one thing, you, you have to do the research. It may be successful, I mean, for their kids, it's their future. <coughs> uh, it's called so I Teach. I do construction. I work for an engineering construction company. I uh, own my own company. But one thing that gets me, you guys got to recognize, to like the other company earlier, but uh, the energy thing, because uh, it sparks, uh, they, uh, they implement things on me, right? And I pay money. But or or uh, predict to see fun. How much money are you guys going to pay for, for this uh, cheese? Because that over there, I'm sick, I know over there. I mean, um, that went there. You can spend a large amount of money to get it built. I mean, but, but I love the build. That like we need to rebuild the city. But the point is, you, we need to protect our city fund um, for our kids. If we are going to spend money for this uh, program, right? They want to spend that money for our kids uh, to, to, to do things. It's cheap for the college fund. So we want to spend money for that. So we got to spend money on this. Once the kids are in high school, and pay for the college fund. Same thing like that. So thank you. But look at research, everything. When do you propose contracts or do anything in the city? We need to protect our fund. We need to protect people's taxpayer money. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Council Member Gomez? Um, yeah, I, <clears throat> first of all, thanks Gabriel for the, uh, for bringing this, you know, requesting for this to come back to us. I think initially in the past few years, you know, we, we talked about back when redevelopment money was around or the agency was, was around. Um, you know, this was one of our desires as a, as a council back then in 2000 and, 9 2010 was to continue to do programs and having revolving funds to continue to do things like this because um, I completely agree with Marty not everybody's um, I'm completely supportive of and I don't even know if the high school does it anymore but I remember having auto shop and 
and wood shop and having all these um, body shop, having all these other things, other ROP programs and things that you could do because not everybody's called to go to a, you know, a four-year school. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from doing that, but um, everybody's needed, whether you're, you know, swinging a hammer or, um, or working at Apple, you know, I mean, it, all those positions are, are very important. So um, I love that you're not just going in there and uh, I would support this, you know, maybe, I don't know if I would from general fund, but I think in general, I would support a program like this to be done even just rehabbing homes, but that you guys are putting an educational twist to it adds even more to it, um, and especially using you know local folks, the Youth Alliance, CET, uh, that's really important to us, Gabriel. So thank you, thank you to Cheese Pop. Please, you know, pass along those thanks as well for for what you guys do throughout the area in Monterey County and and everywhere else you guys work. Um, I'm completely supportive of this. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Scatini. <coughs> Gabriel, you know how I feel about it. I worked with them on a couple of other projects. Um, I think any. I think it's great for anything that you can educate the kids, even, even the young adults. And this is a good program, it keeps them off the street, gives them a chance to maybe go into business or work for a contractor in building homes, but do a good job, just keep up the good work. Councilmember Friend. Uh, no, I, I'm, I support this. I just hope that it stays at $102,000. It doesn't all of a sudden become $150,000 got to stay at Gabriel's been warned not to ask for any more. <laughs> Council Member Valdivia. Yeah, I think this is a good program and also support and um, also helps uh, renovate and t take care of some of the blight in the community. I make a motion. Uh, well, let me, if I can make a comment here, okay. Council Member. I, you know, I, I, your project you did there on San Benito Street, I remember looking at that home for quite a while, wondering why it still stood and wondering when it was going to uh, be taken down until I saw your sign go up. And once I saw the Chispa sign, I, I thought, now that is a challenge. <laughs> and it turned out to be this great, beautiful home in our downtown that represents what our, our city is about. So I want to thank you for taking on that challenge and doing it. If we can do more of these, more power to all of us. I guess my question would be, you know, we loaned you the, the money to do it. Um, Council Member Friend made a, a comment about not putting more money into it, but is there a way we could bring more money back from each project so we can keep building on this fund to, to help you <coughs> build 10, 20 homes a year someday and, or repair them? Yes, what we're, what we're basically doing at this point is uh, we're, we've had uh, monies, leveraged monies that we've been using on the last uh, six homes from the, the uh, uh, Hartnell Community College uh, program that we did. And those have been our own internal revolving monies that we use specifically for the uh, training. Uh, you know, at Chispa, we do after school programs, we do literacy programs that are at our centers. But uh, uh, about eight years ago, we decided to actually set aside some of that money specifically to provide construction training and so we're committed to continuing revolving those monies and um, you know as far as getting more than that hundred and two thousand it would basically be if, if we were to start selling the homes at market rate uh, and making a profit off of that those then that that pool of money could increase but the goal here was to keep uh, the sales of these homes to families at eighty percent of uh, area median income uh, so keeping it affordable and in many cases using uh, city down payment assistance monies uh, to assist them in getting into that home. Um, will there be an opportunity to probably get those more from or have that money earn more? Possibly. Uh, it really depends on how the sales prices fluctuate. Um, but we're, we're open to any ideas. I know that uh, you know, the city has been very gracious to some families in having that down payment monies available to them to uh, get into these homes. Um, so yes, it, the, for sure, there, there is definitely opportunities for that. I think Councilmember Gomez alluded to the fact that one of the best benefits is we're training our young people here Absolutely. to move on into careers in construction, which is they're good paying jobs Absolutely. once you have the, the right training. So if there's a way that we can start adding to that, that pot of money mm -hmm. 
through the sales so we can start building that pool. Um, so yeah, we're actually take on more projects each year. Absolutely. We're also, we're also looking at other sources that are tied specifically to educational programs and training. Uh, many of the students who, for the CET program, were just looking for an opportunity. In many cases, they were actually just building birdhouses, dog houses in the shop there in Gilroy and not really getting that hands-on experience. Uh, and now uh, they actually, instead of just doing solar, they did have an opportunity over a year and a half long period to work with grid alternatives to do some solar installations. But many of them wanted to actually learn how to frame the house, how to do roofing, plumbing, electrical. And with the help of a lot of local contractors here in town, uh, they got that hands-on experience uh, from, uh, for example, a and Plumbing. He's been doing plumbing for more than 20 years and knows all the ins and outs and actually was able to take a group of students and show him the tricks of the trades that he's learned since he started. Uh, and many of them, you know, were just amazed at how personable he was, how uh, this businessman was willing to take somebody under his wing and work. They felt appreciated. They felt uh, worthy basically. And so all of our local subcontractors here in San Benito County that worked on that project <coughs> were exactly like that. And these students, you know, felt so proud at the end of the, of the project. It was amazing, you know. So that's what we, that's that momentum we want to keep going. And yeah, if we can find other sources of money to help leverage, we're, we're definitely going to look for that. Thank you. Thank you. There was a motion? Or? Move to approve. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Move forward to item F4. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council. This is a request to reestablish a police reserve unit within the Hollister Police Department. Um, <coughs> several years ago, the unit was disbanded and uh, all of our reserve officers were let go. Um, I think it would help us bolster our, unit, our officer safety, cut our costs during some of our operations, uh, and provide a pool of qualified proven candidates uh, for future police officer positions. And uh, I'm requesting uh, 10 officers in this initial uh, reserve unit. Okay. Council Member Gomez. Nothing to add to it. I just, if you think you can, I think it's a great idea, you know, for, for you to start this, Chief. Um, and if uh, it's within your, your bandwidth, then, um, yeah, green light. Absolutely. Council Member Scutini. <clears throat> I concur. Uh, I had uh, reserves for quite a few years when I was on the Sheriff's Department in the Marshal, and it worked out great. If you run the program on a strict, strictly base, professional base, I think it would, it would be good for you. And I give you some points already on that. Yes, sir. Council Member Friend? Uh, and I agree. I think this is a great idea and a good program. And I, I don't know why it was stopped in the first place, but I thought we had the reserve officers for a long time. but. Do you have any idea what, if you, are you looking at 5, 6, 10, 20, do you have any idea what you're looking at up front at first? I see that your estimate is for buying equipment for 10 people, so is that what you're looking at? What kind yeah. of hours are we looking at? You know, I don't know um, exactly. I do know that I've had a lot of inquiries about it, and um, I certainly think that there is a large pool right now of folks that are qualified to be reserve officers especially locally, and I think that's kind of really what I'm looking for is local folks to uh, help bolster our, our, our numbers. Um, I think this would actually <coughs> maybe even a cost savings for us to, at the long, in the long run, <coughs> kind of what I've designed it to be. By eliminating overtime and vacation pay? And well, because the, the cost would be less than half of an overtime shift, uh, so, yeah, I think it would be. And also, um, I would actually build this pay scale and these positions into all of our grants and all of our special operations. So I think it, it actually might save us money. I'd, it would probably take a few years for us to do that, but I think we, in the long run, we would actually be ahead of the game. Good. Council Member Valdivia. Yeah, I just uh, think it's a good idea. And I approve the concept. Mm -hmm. Great. Chief, I just want to thank you. I think your, uh, your creativity, your, your vision on finding new ways to make things happen are what we need in the community and that's happening i think it's been proven with the the fire department um, and it's a great way to bring young people and train them put them into high-paying careers so 
I appreciate you bringing this forward. Thank you. Is there a motion? I'll move that we approve. Second. Number four. All in favor? Yeah. All, right. All right. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Chief. I do have a question for the Chief. That's a pretty good price for that Glock Gen 4. Can, can anybody <laughs> get them on that? <laughs> Does that discount apply for uh, city employees and council members? Is there a discount? That does not actually uh, <laughs> oh, okay. apply for that. Thank you. <laughs> Good eye, Ray. That's what I was looking at. All right, calm down, guys, here. Let's <laughs> move on to item F5. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the item before you this evening is kind of the culmination of uh, a few months of work. Um, the City Council has taken some previous actions on um, authorizing the, the release for a, a request for proposals for the sale of two properties that were owned um, by, that are owned by the City of Hollister. This first one is actually about a .58 acre site on the north uh, east corner of uh, uh, Pinnacles National Highway and Hillcrest. Um, it is uh, on November 7th, the city clerk opened up proposals. We received one proposal for the, uh, pro for the purchase of the property um, by UCP, a uh, housing developer <coughs> that is building some homes currently in, um, uh, in the city of Hollister. Uh, they wish to uh, kind of combine that or assemble that piece in with a larger piece that they have an option on with uh, Harold Serrato. Um, it is a... Uh, Ultimately, it's a, a medium density uh, type of project. However, this portion will actually be a, a single family lots about 4,000 square feet. Um, the, mo the, one, the biggest requirement of the property is that, that it needs to meet the, the market value. Um, the proposal came in and met the market value at I think $101,060. Um, so we will, uh, upon approval of the resolution, we will work uh, uh, closely with UCP and try to get this closed as soon as possible. I know that they're in a real big hurry. So. Um, and this is actually general fund revenue. Thank you. Any speakers? Uh, Bill, uh, before you guys see that, when I, when I like I said before, I sent email to you about the price per sale. And it got back to me. So I mean, I'm for this one locally the send the the property, but like like I mentioned before, I want to uh, create a uh, business in the city, and if, if I can do it that way, or uh, if not, get back to me, get opportunities so they can put on the the the, the, the uh, things bids. They like Rudy when he left too, and we went for more with Dave, the engineer the other ideas and that's the things in the city that got nothing back, but I'll go ahead and do it. I mean, what do you want to do? You can't stop the council. Thank you. No other speakers? No. Are there any questions from council? So we're looking at, is it mid, mid-year bill for possible project commencement? At least construction work. <clears throat> um, let's see. Th we are working currently on the environmental review um, for the project as a whole. Um, I'm guessing probably sometime spring to middle of next year. Yes. Okay. I think I think UCP is pretty aggressive, um, so they're going to go <clears throat> as quickly as they possibly can. Um, yeah. Well, I I I think I still remember when I came on board. I spoke to somebody about that, and that was five years ago. So it's nice to. Yeah. To see that. And that was five years ago. It's been through three or four different developers different. now. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see it moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions from council? No. I move that we approve item five, resolution 2013-91. 191. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion Aye. carries. Thank you. Move on to item six. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, again, this is the second property um, that we have been working on. This is a uh, uh, just shy of a half an acre site, right on uh, right north of uh, what is currently the Walgreens site. Um, we thought that we might have a little bit of problems uh, getting a proposal on this by the November 7th <coughs> deadline. I think I may have uh, mentioned that to you uh, that we might extend extend the deadline. However, we did receive. Um, a qualifying proposal from the Hawkins Development Corporation. Um, Hawkins is the same company that actually did the Walgreens building. Um, so again, 
the uh, minimum uh, the minimum bid price was uh, uh, just just north of ninety eight thousand um, dollars. It came in at ninety eight thousand four fifty five and some change. Um, the uh, uh, staff recommends to move uh, adopt the resolution and begin working with the Hawkins Development Corporation uh, on the uh, uh, sales and option to uh, purchase of that property as well. Thank you. Are there any speakers? Keith Snow. I'm sorry, did you want to speak or no? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any questions from council? I, I just have a question. Sure. Bill, how many, uh, how many people, uh, how many engineers, not engineers, but uh, developers that ought to, uh, uh, I'm getting lost here. No. Sorry. Who 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 based the price? Oh, we what we did um, for this is that the city, if you recall, hired um, an appraiser, um, uh, Mike Cullen, and, or no, Stephen Luce, I think, did these appraisals um, for us this time, um, and so. When, once we have an appraisal that's done by a licensed uh, appraiser, that's what we use as our baseline for our minimum um, qualifying bids. All right, but okay. So anybody can put in, put in to be an appraisal for that property? Uh, I'm sorry again? Can, can anybody uh, put in to be an appraisal for that property? Uh, well, the city has the option to select whoever they would like to do the appraisals. Um, on these types of deals, on, on when they're relatively small, um, sometimes what will happen in an, an organization is the city will go and do an appraisal. Um, if, the, if the purchaser believes that the appraisal is high, they can go and get their own, and then there could be some negotiation there. Um, but the, the bottom line is always is that from, to avoid gifting of public funds or some, you know, any of that sort of impropriety, what, we, what we'd like to do is actually have that established. That, basis, that, that sets sort of the fair market value. Um, and that's where we begin. Okay, thanks. It's back to the council at this point. Thank you, Mr. Snow. Mr. Snow, you, you had your chance to speak. Thank you. Uh, is there any other questions from council? Is there a motion? A motion to approve uh, resolution 13192. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Move on to item G1. Any updates from committees from council members? Council member Gomez? Um, yeah, I don't, I think we met after the last, yeah, I think COG was after our second meeting last month. It was kind of an odd month, but um, <clears throat> the only items we had on there actually were, um, uh, we did have a LTA, a local transportation authority, uh, sort of um, strategic plan retreat. Um, so we talked about long range, or excuse me, short range, and long range transit planning for uh, for the for the county. Um, and we did have a consultant team show up, and um, they helped us in uh, rolling out what we consider to be priorities um, in the county for LTA. So. Um, and then we also, during our regular COG meeting, we did, on a three to two vote, <laughs> uh, we did um, uh, continue moving the uh, Route uh, 156 project forward. Um, so um, uh, the COG will be using uh, $9.6 million from um, uh, the California Transportation Commission and uh, STIP funding, um, as you guys already know. So. Um, uh, this is just another one of those uh, processes that have to take place for the uh, 156 project. So um, it is scheduled to begin in 2016 and 17 for those that were wondering. And I think that's all I have, unless uh, Council Member Scatini has anything to add on comment. Mm -hmm. pretty much covered. You pretty much covered everything, Victor. Thanks. Do you have any other reports, Council Member Scatini? I, I don't have a report, but I'd like to ask Mr. Uh, our city manager, a question here. Is it very possible to, to put on the next agenda the, uh, the, the status of the, of the uh, city attorney, the status of your uh, CEO, and why are we dragging our feet on? Why is, why is it taking us so long? Uh, uh, which one? Specifically? Both of them. <laughs> okay. Well, and, I, and also the fire chief. Okay. 
The city attorney, um, uh, if, I, if you recall, Ignacio um, and Victor met and did the interviews yeah. last week. Was um, I was going to have a discussion with um, Deborah tonight after the meeting. Um, so you'll probably be seeing a, a professional services contract um, at your next meeting. Um, so that's kind of taken care of. Um, as far as the city manager recruitment, um, Avery and Associates, I can tell you um, that they are doing interviews tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, and I believe at this, I think Jerry will be reporting a little bit later on. Um, she is working with Paul Kramer right now. Um, do you mind if I spill the beans or do you want no, to do go it? Ahead, go okay. ahead. I, I um, actually mentioned it to um, <laughs> the mayor and the vice mayor. Okay. So um, I think what they're working on right now is, is trying to uh, uh, gather you folks um, for some time in January, uh, the second weekend in January, to actually do the formal interviews. Um, but they're going to want to have a discussion with you about the process and, and what you what you feel the most comfortable with. Um, so those are those two. Um, as far as the fire chief recruitment process is, is going, um, we are scheduling the testing uh, to come up here shortly. Um, we have about five qualified, real qualified candidates. Um, so once we get the testing done, we're going to have a, a normal administrative and uh, probably a, a public uh, interview process and then we'll be making that appointment. You have any idea uh, what time <clears throat> what time limit this is going to take? Are we going to fill these positions in January? I, I would hope. Uh, yeah, I think. Well, uh, the city manager position may be longer than January. I think the original schedule had that person starting in like March. Um, but I, I suppose the the appointment is. I think what they what they said was that probably in January you would make your selection, uh, depending where that person is coming from. You would probably add four to six to eight weeks on that, um, depending on who it was that you were selecting. So that puts it about March. Okay. Um, the city attorney, like I said, you'll be having that done um, next, at probably your next meeting. Um, the uh, fire chief position, I would hope, would be done in January. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Friend. Right. Any committee reports? No. Councilmember Aldivia. No pass. I don't have any committee reports either. Okay, let's move to item G2, informational reports uh, from council members for the public. Council Member Gomez. Um, <clears throat> now the only thing I want to say is um, we don't have anybody from the downtown association, but, um, but I know Jerry works very closely with them, but we were here for the Lights On celebration and everything went great. It was a pretty awesome um, it was a pretty awesome parade, and I do have to say that my favorite one was the Hollister Air Show. But <laughs> being a little biased there. Well, Mike but, will be very happy to hear that. But it was very uh, uh, illuminating. So. <laughs> As you yes. should be. It was thank great. You. Yeah, thank you. That's all. Councilmember Scatini. I have nothing. Councilmember Friend. No, I just have the same as Victor was saying. I thought the lights on parade this year was outstanding. I don't know how many floats we had. It must have been sixty. Uh, it was a couple more than we've ever had before, I know yeah, that. Yeah, and it was outstanding. It was a good crowd. Everybody had a good time, great weather. I, I, it just couldn't have come off better. So okay, I'll great. confess, this is the first one I've ever, ever missed. I oh. know, that's probably Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Dagger to the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Valdivia. You know, I just wanted to thank Jerry and everybody that was involved in that. I think, and also the community members, really. Oh, everybody, but thank you, because I know you've been involved with it for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it's that. great the way people volunteer mm -hmm. and yeah. participate. Mm -hmm. okay. I'd like to remind everyone, December 12th at 4 p.m. on Rosebud Lane, or road, uh, they'll be handing over the keys to Sergeant Jurgens um, for his new home that he well deserves, and mm -hmm. hopefully everybody can make it out there also like to thank the HDA for the great job they did on the Lights on Parade through um, Jerry's guidance, guidance over the years. Um, built that structure, but I, I have to say the best float was the dual language float. <laughs> I'm a little partial to that, and it, it, it was a great parade, and it's always nice to see the community come together and make us uh, that, that, that perfect town that we really are, so it's, it's nice to show that off. What time is um, that on the 12th? Yeah. It's uh, 4, 4 p.m. on the 12th. Uh, so if all of you can show up, that'd be great. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. He's getting the keys to his new home. 
That's great. That's awesome. Absolutely. City Manager. I have nothing to report this evening. City Attorney. No report. Chief. Two things. Uh, number one, uh, I had a, a little program I was doing <coughs> the last five weeks called Hollister Gives Back. Today was the uh, end of the program, and uh, I wanted to tell you all that the community came forward, responded really well, and uh, ended up with about 21,000 cards That's amazing. that we're going to send to our injured um, veterans and injured active duty service members that are actually in hospitals right now. So uh, it, was a, it was amazing. Um, UPS actually donated the postage. Um, it was 165 pounds plus in cards. Uh, filled up the back of the entire truck we brought over there. So I was pretty impressed. Um, really job, good, Chief. good effort awesome. by the community. Great. Yeah. Great job leading that, that effort, Chief. Yeah, and the second thing is, is uh, next council, me and I should be bringing back um, the SRO position that we talked about and uh, maybe possibly the parking position as well. So that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk. Um, as Billy said, I, I do need to talk to all of you about some scheduling for upcoming interviews and things, and I will relay the, the good messages on to the Hollister Downtown Association. I am proud of the Lights On celebration. It's been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's move forward to item G3. Okay, we have a request for a five-minute break. Okay, let's resume the meeting and move on to item G3. Okay, I'll make this kind of brief. This is the uh, our quarterly update on uh, our, pretty much on the general fund, how we're doing r right now. Uh, where I kind of want to start this is how we finished l last year, 12-13, because it actually was very well. Uh, our revenue came in 2.4 million more than we uh, projected. And the reason was is 765,000 of land sale that we we've discussed before and we've restricted that for economic development. The big thing was a one-time payment for the uh, RDA r dissolution payment that uh, when we had money in the RDA funds and then that was split up to all the different uh, tax agencies and we and that was money that we knew was coming in and that was the one-time money that we wanted to use to pay down the side fund. Plus then we had uh, charges for services, a lot of the Voting fee, fees were coming in, um, which were more than we were projected. Uh, then expenditures came in pretty close to what we projected. We had some salary savings, um, and, but that was another 230000 of uh, of savings over what we expected. So we ended up with an available fund balance, taking out the amounts that we restricted for economic development, like the land sale. Um, we have 3.5, we're going to start the year with $3.5 million 
which it gave us a reserve of about 24 percent. Yeah, we did a great job. Uh, we can clap sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, this time, this is, this is good. We're news. all in shock and ha with happiness. <laughs> right. We haven't seen numbers that big forever. No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank so, you, Marty. I mean, I mean, going back to the one-time revenue, that's why we really like to use it for one-time expenditures, like paying down the side fund. Uh, our revenues, uh, it, the first quarter is always difficult because a lot of our revenues don't come in yet. A lot of our revenues come in mid-year. Uh, we've got sales tax coming in. What we see, it looks like it's coming in uh, as we projected, probably maybe, and hopefully a little bit better than uh, we projected. So most of those are... are you see a lot of estimating because, like I said, a lot of those revenues haven't come in. Uh, uh, Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Back to that, Brent. Uh, sure. So I'm assuming you know, don't know where it comes from, but license and permits for the 20, you said. Um, a lot of those are the building and engineering uh, plan check fees. Okay. All right. So the taxes, like for, like, say, the, the rally or any type of event like that that requires extra Licenses, licenses, and it goes under. Uh, go under the sales tax, correct? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, expenditures. We don't have very many estimates. One estimate that we had was a, um, a workers' comp bill uh, was paid after the first quarter. So that's what most of those estimates are: is our workers' comp uh, charges. But expenditures are are coming in right where we. Expect the budgeting, the 68% on non-departmental is that payment of the side fund. So we paid 100% of our side fund, so that makes sense that that's going to be a little bit higher than uh, the 25% that we're at. But everybody is uh, is maintaining their, their budget for the first quarter, and we're glad to see that. Uh, the one area that has been always the area of concern with council is where engine engineering salary allocation has been, making sure that they're charging to the projects that they said they're going to. Uh, their budget's at 30 salaries, or are 37 percent, but a actually their uh, engineering inspection revenue is at 37 percent of budget, too. So there's m more general fund work coming in, so it does make sense that their expenditure is a little higher than, ex uh, than we expected. Same thing with the fire department's o overtime. It's at 37 percent. Um, we had some delays with getting reserves on. However, but their total personnel budget is at 21%. So that's all the overtime, regular salaries. So they're actually, if you just focused on the overtime, it would look bad, but the personnel is definitely very reasonable. Um, what has happened since this quarter? Uh, we, as of today, we will be paying down five million, we pay down $5.3 million in sewer bonds, we're called. This will be an interest savings over the life of the bonds of $3.3 million, and we'll have annual savings of $365,000 a year. And uh, cash okay. savings. Okay. Very good news, Brett. Terrific. So we, I mean, we try to keep our sewer uh, charges down, and I know we were criticized a lot about it, but that is a uh, focus that we try to keep those, those down. And uh, the Measure E committee has uh, started up, and we've met twice, and our next meeting will be uh, next Monday. So, uh, when, when are we going to get that six, I think, six month re report on that? Uh, when we got the committee, uh, they're working on right now what they're going to present to you, and that's just the kind of a, because it's a startup, they're, everybody's kind of getting their uh, two cents in, and I think once we kind of agree upon what is going to be, or the committee agrees what they're going to present, that you know, will be presented. Uh, they're hoping for, uh, in probably the more real, I think the first meeting of February. Okay, and that's that's six months. It, it'd be about nine months because the first three months were in last uh, count or last fiscal year, and right. so it, by the time they got started up, uh, they they plan to do it quarterly once they get the first first one out. Yeah, I think we were off to a to a slightly late start when we started getting things rolling. So, no questions. I just have a concern. As I went through the line item deal, I noticed that several of the departments, and I guess this is more for Billy's concern than mine, several of the departments are already at 75 to 95 percent on their contractual budgets, and I think that might be something that we need to look at because 
if that's the way it's going to go, some of those departments, if they keep going the way they are, are going to be at 160 percent at the mid-year review. Right. So I, right. I, I, and I'm not sure, you know, I haven't drilled into it far enough to tell you that that's a one-time charge for some contractual things or what they are. I'm just concerned that as you look at the lime item by, by department, some of them are getting pretty high. Right. And it may, that may be the trend that they're going to spend it all in the first quarter and not have any... Some, some are like that, but then we, okay. in fact, uh, the department heads will be excited to hear that they'll have their monthly department head reports uh, tomorrow. Okay. So the, we go through and we highlight all of the, okay. we look at those things for them and give a responsibility. And for it them was to surprising it's not the fire or the police. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. But I mean, we would expect there to be large contractual monies there because so, they have to. <laughs> I, I got a question for you, Brett. Sure. <clears throat> Do you monitor the expenditures uh, of these department heads? I, I monitor I, seeing where they are on their budget. Do, do you? Uh, I understand that, but <clears throat> how come uh, something like Ray said? How come some of that so far ahead, so far spent so much in such a short time? Because we got another six months to go. Correct. So, I mean, like I said, we. We look through it and monitor it. Some of the things that we know, they've, uh, it, it could be a timing issue where they've gone and looked at or got a supplemental appropriations and we just don't have it in yet. But we do monitor it, make sure that they're not going over. Or if there is a reason why it went over, are they saving somewhere else? Because we do look at the, to the okay. major object level, the total con the uh, contractual city services. City manager does too, huh? Correct. He gets eight well, your department's at 50%. I don't know. <laughs> well, but we had a big pay, we had a big payout. Right. Yeah, I, you know, they could all be explained. I just wanted to bring right. it up to concern. Right. That's all. Okay. Are there any other questions? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the job you're doing. Excellent. Good job. work. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brent. Um, really quick, can we? Um, can I either get a copy of this, a hard copy of it, or just the individual report emailed to us or to me? Correct. I can email. Um, just yeah. Just because I don't. Yeah. You, I don't need the Marty whole. Marty usually takes my copy that I have there. <laughs> but I'll email you a nice. I figured, yeah. I'll give you a nice colored one. Okay. Or an email one. And, and then you so. should hopefully everybody received their the fiscal status report. Did you get that too? Okay. We'll make sure you get that too. I want the same report he wants tomorrow when I meet with you. Sure. Yeah, I'll make sure you get this also. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. But you've, you've made it easy. To, uh, the, the context of it is very easy to follow and it's easy to. Thanks. That's our idea is not to overwhelm you with uh, information, but make it a little bit more concise. Yeah, it's, even as a council member, we could read it. <laughs> I'll work on that. <laughs> keep it simple and keep it under 100%. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Right. Item H, I, J, and K, no business. There's a motion. Motion for adjournment. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much.